It's your birthday, so let's party everyone. It's your birthday, so let's... We had some great times. Meet the man down on his luck. Taking the job as a night janitor in a once successful, now abandoned family entertainment center. Where suddenly the animatronic characters come to life and attack him. Welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's. What? This is not that movie? Well, it's a ripoff then. What? It was filmed prior to it? Hi there, it's Micha. We will have a closer look at that, but for now I just say welcome to Willy's Wonderland. A man runs over a spike strip outside of Hayesville, North Carolina. The mechanic tells him that the repairs would cost about a thousand dollar, but he only accepts cash and the ATM is broken. Oh, that right over there. <laughs> yeah, we ain't got no internet in Hayesville. However, there is a way to earn that money as the night janitor of Willy's Wonderland, a once successful, now abandoned family entertainment center. He just needs to clean the place up overnight. Little does he know about the place, because the eight animatronic characters are possessed by the demonic souls of serial killers and worse. And the town struck a deal with those devils to provide sacrifices in exchange for them not killing the inhabitants. We got Willy Weasel, Artie Alligator, Cammy Chameleon, Ozzy Ostrich, Nighty Knight, Tito Turtle, Gus Gorilla and Siren Sarah. As the janitor does his job, unfazed by his occasional run-ins with the creatures that he takes out quite easily, <laughs> the town's sheriff makes sure he stays inside and dies as planned, while a group of teenagers try to save the man and afterwards burn the place to the ground. Will the group of saviors get the guy out? Does he even need the help and how does it all end? To not spoil the obvious, I will stop the synopsis here. So, Nicolas Cage versus a bunch of animatronic characters. That should be a real treat, right? And to a certain degree, it really is. But there are many constraining factors to consider too. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. Is this movie a rip-off or not? Well, according to the bonus features on the Blu-ray, the creative team deems the idea for the movie totally original. I thought that when I read the script that it was original, I thought it was absurd. I like things that are absurd. It was such an interesting, unique script. And you may think so too, considering the similarly set up Five Nights at Freddy's came out two years later, which would make it a rip-off of this movie, right? Not quite, as Five Nights at Freddy's is based on a series of video games, which dates back to 2014. So it is safe to say they ripped off those games, be it consciously or unknowingly. However, that shouldn't diminish our fun, original idea or not. There are some things that are very enjoyable, like the whole setup of Nicolas Cage's character, who is only referenced as the janitor, as he is neither giving a name nor any line of dialogue. Again, according to the bonus features, a nod to the Western genre, especially Eastwood's Men with No Name. It's a pale rider meets uh, killer clowns from outer space. He doesn't really have a name. He's sort of a man with no name. But in the script, he's referred to as the janitor. When I read it, I immediately thought this was a Western, especially with a character that Nick's playing, this character who'd never spoke. He is mysterious, he's an enigma. That worked pretty well, actually, especially for the German video label that could save money on not having to hire high-tier voice talent Martin Kessler, 
who dubs Cage pretty much exclusively since 1996's The Rock. Not working out so well for him though, missing out on a nice payday. Being silent though adds to the mystique of the character, who is never questioning anything along the way. Like him having to pay the repairs, even though the sheriff admittedly caused the accident. Hey, Jed, what's up? This old boy had the misfortune of finding your zigzags out there. I figured I'd bring them back to you. Or the fact that only cash is accepted while no ATM is working, even though he would have had the money in the bank. The best moments are when he runs into one of the creatures, just fights them. and then carries on with his assigned task, as if nothing ever happened. He also isn't reacting to the teenagers warning him and asking him to leave. Hey, sir! You're not safe in there, we gotta get you out! He has taken on a job and he will just do it, no questions asked. And be sure to take breaks. Always good to pace yourself. One running gag is based on the place's owner telling him to not forget to take his breaks regularly. And he does so for a few minutes every hour. <sighs> Even if he is in mid-fight or if someone else is in peril. He usually spends the time on a pinball machine he cleaned up and in one scene he goes full Nicolas Cage on it. Those are the moments that make the movie and it likely wouldn't have worked with any other actor in that role. Something the creators also call out. Nick prepared this part as well as if he had, you know, 20 pages of dialogue to do every single day. I mean, I don't think anybody else could have played this role but Nicolas Cage, no. nobody. But after discussing the upside, let's look at the issues I mentioned earlier. A big one was the budgetary constraints. Even with Cage having a producing capacity, money was scarce. The eight animatronic characters overall looked pretty cheap, with some being more akin to furries. I could have even forgiven that, even though a few really looked terrible if they wouldn't have tried to hide that fact by filming them in weird ways, especially during the fight scenes, which were captured in a way too hectic fashion. Also, there was next to no budget for other effects, such as blood and gore, which also was a bummer. The movie still could have been a winner by just accepting that and enjoying the campiness of the visuals and the acting. And that approach for sure saved the movie from the worst. But there were so many problems with the screenplay too, making it a really tough sell. Most of those issues are based on stupid character behavior, which is pretty much applicable to all other characters besides the janitor, though he behaves in the oddest way, but we have chosen to embrace it. While the teenagers are admirable for still trying to save the janitor, even though he ignores their warnings, which cost the group dearly, how they all act later on is mind-boggling. True, not paying attention to what's happening around you or hiding in the most obvious places is pretty much on brand with your average horror movie. However, there is a couple that was against going into the building totally aware of the creatures being alive and murderous, yet they thought it would be a great idea to have sex in the room they knew to be the one most prominently used for past killings, while even acknowledging one of the characters standing in the corner. What was that? It's staring at us. Well then let's give it a show, what you talking about? Then you have the sheriff, who was not doing anything to help, just the opposite. Yet she was requesting outside help from a state trooper, which only created more problems for her. Made no sense too. Why'd you request the state to send back up for one night to curfew a place the size of a postage stamp? This then is followed by her helping the demons, 
so not to attract their vengeance even though Cage already eliminated most of them. Wouldn't it have made more sense to team up instead and get rid of the whole threat once and for all? Same goes for the town never trying to burn the whole place down, like the kids were trying to do. Not sure if that would have done the trick, but should have been their first move before brokering a deal. Just saying. And with that being said, Let's get to the rating, but before we go there, let me ask you to like and share this video if you enjoyed it so far. And if you are no subscriber yet, maybe consider to change that. By also hitting the notification bell, you will get a heads up for most of my new videos. Now for the rating. I really wanted to love this movie ever since I saw the first trailer for it. Took me a while to actually watch the movie, even after having it lying around for quite a while. I guess. Subconsciously, I was fearing it will not live up to my expectations. Unfortunately, I was right. The movie was not really as enjoyable as hoped. It still came with plenty of entertaining moments, though they got more and more silenced by screenplay issues as the runtime progressed. Uh, uh, uh. <gasps> Bobby, that thing just moved. Where the fuck did it go? It for sure wasn't a great movie, not even a really good one. It needs to be placed somewhere between okay, as I didn't regret watching it, and nice, as it was entertaining, at least in many parts. I'm going with 6 out of 10 points here, purely due to Cage being Cage. With another actor in the lead, this would for sure have landed around maybe 4 points. And if you are not a fan of Nicolas Cage, consider this score as your guidance too. Parts of me feel like 6 points is a fair score, other parts think I might have been too generous. People will for sure always disagree either way. So let's just stick with that and end the review here. What about you? Have you seen it and agree? Or have you not seen it yet and if so, are you now interested or are a little bit scared of? What do you think about the story being so close to Five Nights at Freddy's? Do you believe it to be a coincidence? Whatever you like to share, let me know in the comments. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching. The eight animatronic characters are possessed, possessed, possession, possession. And you may think so too, considering the similarly, 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 similarly.